So he commissioned me to do like the cover. And after I did the cover, it like blew up overnight, which is it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it blew up overnight and everybody wanted to see it. And I, I, I recognized the merits of it, which is why I even bothered to do it in the first place. But after that, he was like, yeah, I want to do like this whole comic. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And I started working on, he commissioned me for a few concepts of her, like the same process that I explained about producing like A, B, C, mm-hmm. different character versions. I initially wanted her to, to be wearing a dress because... Mm-hmm. So that was a personal thing. I, I specifically didn't see a lot of female characters wearing dresses, wielding swords. So I wanted yeah. to see that, but uh, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, obviously, it's not practical. And I produced a few concepts. If you've seen any of the concepts or like the character designs online, like it's not even the final character design that that gets posted everywhere but i had a a concept of her inside like a civil war outfit uh full jacketed up and everything with the two swords and then started working on the comic and her concept changed a little bit in the comic but uh, that's where i I designed i never did a full design for the final outfit so you you won't find that character sheet but uh, i was done in the middle of doing the comic but I did that, and, and that's where the official outfit for her came out. And yeah, I guess the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's definitely that's that's definitely cool. Though. I can admittedly though, definitely the dress idea is definitely kick ass. It reminds me of the uh, was it Kill Bill when she's in like the wedding dress. When he said that, I immediately pictured in my head it could have been like not a long dress. But like she cut the, yeah, the bottom yeah. of the what dress the? off and yeah. kept the boots on. See, see, that's that artist mindset right there. I, I know where you was going, <laughs> Colton. No, no, bro. So you make it oh, practical right, right there. You just rip the, the bottom off. Well, of it. you know, I figured it wouldn't necessarily have lasted forever, but you know, yeah. it, it could have been like an interesting start. But of course, this was before like there was a script and everything. So yeah, uh, it, it all really depended on whether the script matched what I wanted to do in that situation. Hey, man, but look, it turned out great either way, so. Oh, yeah, I, definitely. When I seen the two swords, I was like, man, I don't care what <laughs> this is about. I'm going to read it. Yeah, nah, Seriously. I, yeah. I just love a badass yeah. chick with swords, and she just dicing up people. That's why I love Kill Bill. It's just, it's amazing to me. I don't care what anybody says. It's the best thing. Ever. Marcus will like it as long as there's swords involved. Like, it could just be, it could be anything. It could be yeah, clowns yeah. with swords. Yeah, man, look, like, I'm down. Look, Cortland, when I was when I was in, like, elementary school, every character, all of my main characters had a sword. And even sometimes they didn't even use it. I just liked the fact that it was on their back, <laughs> on their hip. And I was like, because it looks cool. <laughs> And I was like, damn, now I got to figure out how to make this, like, practical because I can't just keep giving them swords and mm-hmm. they don't use it for anything. So I'm, I'm a big sword guy because it's guns and stuff is real quick and easy. You know, swords, yeah. you got to know swords how to move are, that thing. Yeah. I think swords are more yeah. aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. Yes, very. Like, if you're talking, like, yeah. Final Fantasy with uh, clouds, big O, like, Oh, oh yeah, that yeah, huge yeah. ridiculous. Like, that, like it's yeah. impractical, yeah, but you're like about... it's impractical, but you're like, I just like to see that him swing the yeah. sword around. It's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, Coral, you mentioned making a script. Give us a rundown of like how the script looked. Like, did it have drawings on it or what was the, like the process and like the ideas of the comic into images? Okay. So David's not an artist, so there were no drawings on it. <laughs> but there's no reason to say that couldn't happen. But generally, a comic script will come with a double column page where one is the dialogue. And then mm-hmm. actually, would it be the first column will be like the action. So what's happening on the page? I guess I'll finish explaining. Yeah, the first column will be the action of what's happening on the page. And the second column will be like the dialogue between the characters. And specifically with me and David, it's, we're both very open to how things how things are translated. Like he might suggest like, this will happen on panel one, this will happen on panel two, this will happen on panel three. But 
he 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 gives me the freedom to work it however I want to. That because since he's not an artist or he's not he's not used to doing comics himself, he might say put like too many panels on a page, at least for my liking, and like he'll have this and this happening on the single page. And then one thing happening on the next page and I'll be like, let's break that up and I'll have this and this happen on this page and I'll have the next thing happen. The next two things happen on the next page after that. And he's totally fine with that. Sometimes it'll get to three pages later, but he gives me a lot of freedom to work it however I want, as long as I make what's supposed to happen. Yeah. So if oh, dialogue's on one page, I, if it fits better on the next page after I do the art, that's just, that's fine with him. Cool. One other thing that I, I wanted to know, because of course it's like a, a sci-fi fantasy look at history, but it's still a period piece. So like, how long did it take you to research how that environment would look, even with clothing and things like that? A uh, couple months. Not that it necessarily has to take a couple months, but I think I went through the whole summer knowing that I was going to actually... So I did the cover, I think it was like September of 2016, no, September of 2015 or something like that. And then I remember going all the way through 2016 and I remember going on vacation and I was working on like concepts and doing research and stuff like that. So it took a couple of months. It's always good to do reference as thoroughly as possible if you want to match like a period piece. So it, it could take a couple of months. It could be, it could be a week or something like that it's just it's a matter of uh, it depends on the artist really oh okay how, well, how, how deep you want to go into the references like everybody else i think it looks great what are you about to say Marcus? no i was just been saying some stuff you just already familiar with you just go off of that and then you're like oh okay i can look into this a little bit more yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I definitely need it for like period pieces like that i definitely need needed the reference yeah. to um because that's not part of my natural schema for obvious reasons i don't live back then <laughs> i've always been interested in like fashion and stuff like that in in those days like the differences in fashions the differences in like the way houses were built and stuff like that yeah you know it, it's a fun process it looks like you had a great time because yeah. i was just looking and just the cover the inside of the book like all the character models like you said the fashion and the clothing like it you know it's, it's just paying attention to the detail because i know i'd mess around and put a cell phone in there somewhere so <laughs> it's just like man so put just... shade somewhere bro put the shade <laughs> yeah, daughter right, exactly exactly <laughs> at the very end you can hear the uh, what is it the csi miami music and then harriet comes down with the shade i've been doing research on that because it's actually not that easy to get research for the clothing and, and stuff mm -hmm. from back then because photographs back then they if they had them if they had photographs it, they weren't great photographs so a lot of my reference would also come from like movies that took place. Mm -hmm. i'll just been to say movies yeah you know, like 12 years of slave or yeah. or, you know, or something like that Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, though. And one of the last things I wanted to know, in particular, because I just love, I love Harriet's design, like where, how long did it take you to come up with the idea of how you wanted her to look? Because I'm sure that could have gone a lot of different ways, but like as far as like age wise and like just the overall design, how long did it take you guys to come up with that? I think David always wanted her to be along the younger side, a younger Harriet Tubman, so probably late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, as far as her look, the initial thought that I was going with was that because originally I thought it was going to be like in the middle of the Civil War. And I think the comic is going there eventually, but mm. I thought it was going to be like in the middle of the Civil War. So her outfit was initially designed like with her wearing a Civil War type outfit. Her shirt was like, was modeled off of the, the Civil War uniform. Mm. Oh, one of the Civil War uniforms that I found online. Okay. And her pants, her pants were originally modeled off of the Civil War outfit also, but in the, as you'll see in the comic, you've seen in the comic, 
I had them more tattered when she arrived. So you, you wouldn't know that it, that's necessarily what they were. Right. But um, that's how we arrived at that final concept. It started okay. there. Obviously, it's, it takes place before before the Civil War anyway. Yeah. So it's not a Civil War uniform, but it was inspired by that. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, I dig it, man. I think I can tell you, because I, I think I've heard him say it inside his interviews, but the original idea for Harry Tubman, Demon Slayer, is she, we were going to do the whole series. And at the end, we were going to pull, pull out like in the future, and it was going to be a character reading reading the story and talking to Sarah Michelle Giller. And like, that's the story of the first vampire slayer. And it was going to be Harry oh, Tubman. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's sick, man. Yeah, that's dope. That's, that's dope. That is dope, man. But that was only if we got back by a dark horse. <laughs> 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 but that was, the, you know, the original plan to ultimately yes. end up there. Yes, man.